we want to move to Matthew chapter 11. And God showed me something very powerful. I want to share with you this evening. And I will read in the Amplified Version, in verse 28, chapter 11, Matthew. Come to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened. And I will cause you to rest. I will erase and relieve and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek, humble, or lowly in heart. And you will find rest, relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and blessed quiet for your souls. For my yoke is wholesome, not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing. <clears throat> A comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be borne. This evening, I want to speak to you, precious people of God. Don't carry your burden to life. Okay? It is not God's will that you carry burden through life. And I want to show you, Christian. Though they say they are strong, but they are still weak because they don't know how to show off the burden of life. The Bible says the invitation of Jesus is come to me, all you who labor. We need to understand the day when the falls of Adam and Eve, every one of us have to do laboring. And along with it comes a lot of heartache, pain, sorrows. And as Christians, we don't know how to return that to the Lord because the Lord's invitation is, give it to me. When you are laboring, don't carry the burdens in life. <clears throat> and even though we pray and think that we are strong, but really we still are loaded down with burdens in this life. And Jesus expects that every smart Christian Every Christian has got wisdom. <clears throat> You've got to give that burden of life back to him. When he created you, he didn't create you with burdens of life. He created you to be free as in the image of the oh God Almighty. And so, when you are discouraged in life, that's the burden. What's your burden? You are discouraged. Your life is burdened down with discouragement. And you need to learn how to take that discouragement and give it back to the Lord. <clears throat> An example of a burden is the duties that comes with worries. If you are worries, if you have worries, that's the burden. Pain. If you experience unseen pain, pain in the spirit, <clears throat> which eventually pain in your physical, these are burden that is overloading you. And you don't know how to treat it, or you don't know how to take care of it, and you are burdened down in life. And also, anxiety, fear, and many negative things in life. And the worst part is we allow people to throw their burdens at us in life. 
Their anxiety, they cannot handle it. They say, here, take and share some of my anxiety instead of giving it to the Lord. Or they say, here is some pain. I'm going through some pain. Hey, please come, take some of my pain. Here is my discouragement. Come share my discouragement. And so they take their burden. Instead of throwing to the Lord, they throw it onto you. And you become discouraged. It's like a, a disease. If one person gets the flu, you will pass it on to you. You don't need the flu. You don't need somebody's burden. Because God say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are burdened down. <clears throat> so this burden is not some kind of a weight. At first, I thought also it was some kind of weight. <laughs> really, the burdens are the cares of this life. You have been burdened down with a lot of things that is not from God. Doubt, fear, anxiety, things that is not good for you. Moses in Numbers chapter 11 and verse 11, <clears throat> this is what Moses said to the Lord. Why have you been ill with your servant? <clears throat> Moses told God, I not only found favor in your sight, have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all these people on me. Ha <laughs> ha. Think about it. One million people's worry, fear, doubts, complain, murmuring, unhappiness, sadness. You name it. They are this one million people's burden. Oh my God. They throw it onto Moses every day, 24-7. They complain. Moses don't have water, Moses. Moses, I don't have bread. My children are crying, Moses. Moses, the desert heat is too hot. Do something. Ask the Lord, bring the clouds, Moses. And so Moses, in Numbers chapter 11, verse 11, Moses was carrying the people's unhappiness in his life. And Moses went to the Lord and said, why do you... Why you do this to me, Lord? I already got enough trouble on my own. Why you put this one million people trouble on me? I cannot handle it, Lord. You see, we need to live life by carrying our burdens to the Lord. And we must not allow people... You see, when you succeeded, spiritually or in your life you achieve in the Lord, those that did not, they will try to pull you down to their level. They become jealous because they didn't get it from God and they saw that God gave it to you. And in their jealousy, they'll pull you to their level. They will try to say, here, share some of my burden. I'm a failure, so please join me. Don't achieve. Yes, there are such people. I will show you in the Bible. We need to learn we should not be carrying the burdens of negativity in our life. It is not the will of God. Because Jesus said, I've come, you might have life. And life more abundantly. But the enemy... He's not happy. You are enjoying your life in the Lord, and the enemy say, "No, no, 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 no." Didn't Satan was jealous of Job and came and tried to disturb Job. And so, humanity today, since the day of Adam, 
they are carrying the burdens of life. And I want to show you today, you need to be free from the burdens of life. And Jesus said, give it to me. Don't carry it. If you carry it, you are to be blamed. We heard the story of Carrie Ted Boone, who helped the Jewish people. She one day carried a whole bunch of trash on her back to the stage and told the people, here is a bag of trash. I'm carrying it. And after that, when she left the stage, she took back the bag of trash and carried it out. She said, Christians are like that. They have all this trash and God set them free. But after that, they carry back the trash and go out and live their life carrying trash. It is not the will of God for you to carry trash in your life. In fact, Paul says, stay away from people who carry trash. Okay? There is two kinds of animals that achieve in the animal kingdom. While the others, they are not achievers. The Bible talks about them. The eagle is a bird that is strong, that can have vision of five kilometers the sight. The eagle flies high and rely on the current of the air to carry, to, to fly along without struggling and using much of its energy. <clears throat> the eagle will not feed on big things, but the eagle will catch live fish, live animal, because the eagle is the most beautiful, powerful bird God created. <clears throat> The vulture, they will stay in group. They will feed on the kill or the dead carcasses of some animal that have died. That's the vulture, the nature of the vulture. And then the lion is the king of the beast. When the lion comes and roar, even though the lion is not as big as an elephant or a rhinoceros, they will run away because when the lion roar, it means you better get out and get running or I'll eat you up. So the lion is the king of the beast. The hyenas, just like the vultures, they feed on dead things. So what am I trying to tell you is either you can be an eagle, in the Lord, or you can be vultures. You either become a lion in the Lord, or you become hyenas. And definitely, the eagle and the lion, their nature is, they do not carry burdens in their life. And so today, God wants to bless you. But you've got to learn, in my life, I will not carry the burdens that will burden me down, that will not cause me to achieve. And all these are not from God because I was created in the image of God. God wants me to live the higher life. God expect you to trust him. God say he wants to give us many good things. But are we able to bear it? We have to take his offer. The offer is Jesus wants to give you peace. But do you want peace? If you keep holding on to your worries, you cannot accept his peace. So there are people, it's just that they love their burdens. Like Corey Ted Boone, they love to carry back the worries with them. No matter how much you tell them, they say, no, 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 I want, I cannot live without my worries. 
And so Jesus cannot give them peace. I mean, Jesus already offered them the peace they don't want. They just want to hang on to the worries. The same thing with joy. Jesus wants to give you joy. But you've got to say, Jesus, I want joy. But instead, you want unhappiness. All the time, you're not happy. Even after you pray, you still want to be burdened down with your unhappiness. Why? I really don't understand. And we, we hear about the joy of the Lord is our strength. But, but we still don't want it. We don't want to release this unhappiness. And so we keep joy away from our lives. Burdens. We cannot be burdened down with the cares of this life, folks. It is not you go labor, everybody labor. I labor, you labor, everyone. Because it's the day Adam failed God, he was, he was chased out. But today, Jesus brought you back to give you joy, peace, righteousness, a sound mind. But do you want the sound mind or do you say, no, I want to keep giving my mind to the enemy? And the enemy will start throwing fiery darts. And then you say, oh, I'm discouraged. Oh, I'm sick. You know, you are the power of your word. If you keep saying you're sick, you're going to be sick. If you say you're fat, you're going to be fat. If you say you're unhealthy, you are going to be unhealthy. Because what you say, eventually, you are going to, in a way, prophesy your future. You are going to say what you will become. And so we need to stay away from vouchers. We need to stay away from hyenas. Because you and I, we are created to be the champion for the Lord. Don't hang around loser. If you hang around loser, the loser will pass their spirit to you. And this is so important that I learned. If you want to be champion, you hang around people that have the spirit of champion. <clears throat> Through prayer, we can receive everything that God has promised us. Through prayer. And we pray. But the trouble is a lot of time we don't receive it because the cup cannot be filled if it is empty out. And that's why when we pray, we need to learn to empty out ourselves. Empty all the garbage out. Empty the things that is not of Christ. So that Christ can fill you with all the goodness that he wants to give you. Amen. I want to quote this. I saw this. Okay, and I'll quote it. It's from Watchman Nee. Now, every one of us know Watchman Nee, very powerful man. Okay, for China. We should try our best to pour out all our burdens of negativity in our spirit by prayer until all of them have left us. This is what watch many say. I repeat, we should try our best to pull out all the burdens of negativity, negativity in our spirit by prayers until all of them have left us. You see, Jesus has set us free. Jesus has made us new. But why do you want to still keep the old person alive? You need to kill the flood, throw out, get transformed. Only good things comes from the Lord. He never gives you more than you can bear. Always remember that. God will never give you that you cannot bear. He wants to give you that you can bear. So to every person is different. Okay, again, I want to quote this from very wise people. The greatest thing in the world is not where you stand, but which direction are you heading? A ship is built to sail, not drift, not anchor in life. No? A ship is built to sail. 
you are built to be in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, not to drift along in life, not to be anchored down by burdens of life. Think about it. It is so important. The Bible says in Psalm 68 and in verse 19 and 20, Blessed be the Lord who bears our burdens and carry us day by day. Even the Lord who is our salvation. Verse 20 say, God is to us a God of deliverances and salvation. And to God, the Lord belongs escape from death. That means set us free. So you see, God wants to bear your burdens and carry you day by day because he is our salvation. Also, he's a God of deliverances and salvation. This is what God wants to do for you and I. So don't be burdened down by all these negative things in your life. The care, the Bible calls it the cares of this life. And we need to be willing to say, you know, when Jesus heals someone, do you want to be healed? The person says, yes, of course I want to be healed. You see, you've got to tell God, God, I want to be set free from all burdens. Then Jesus say, please, leave your crutches. Please, leave the place. Get up and jump. Don't be a lame man sitting there all day long. <laughs> this is what is so important, you know. Some people, they don't want. They say, no, I, I feel comfortable. I've been sitting here for 38 years. So let me continue sitting until I die. You see, you've got to be willing to get up and get out of that place that 38 years have been, you know, your comfort zone. You know, a lot of people, they like the comfort zone. And then also, Jesus said, take my yoke. Ah, what do you mean take my yoke? The yoke is learning from the Lord Jesus Christ. To yoke to him. Learn from the Lord. Don't learn from the world. Don't learn from someone else. But learn from the Lord. Okay? Because Jesus, not only is he humble, not only he's meek at heart, <clears throat> but Jesus said, you will find rest for your souls. A lot of Christians are restless today. They don't have the peace. That's why they are restless. And God wants them to have the peace and not to be restless. In Psalms 138 and in verse 7, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, have any one of us never walked into the midst of trouble? We have. <laughs> Sometimes we don't know. We just walk right into some trouble that we didn't ask for it. You will revive me. You will stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies. And your right hand will save me. You see, that's the promise of God. God say, you know, unintentionally, sometimes you get yourself into trouble. But God is still God. God will revive you. God will stretch forth his hand against the wrath of your enemy. You see, if Jesus is for you, who can be against you? We all know that. God wants to be for you, folks. But you've got to learn to rest in the Lord. Don't be burdened down by all the negative stuff in this life. Okay? And then also Psalms 81. Let's go to Psalms 81. Again, what David has learned. And he wants to share it with you in Psalms 81. And in verse 6 and 7. I remove his shoulder from the burden. You know, when someone is burdened down, you can see 
their, their facial expression, their shoulder kind of goes down. And here the Bible says, I remove his shoulder from the burden. His hands were free from the basket. You call in distress, I deliver you. I answer you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah, Sila. You see, God goes with you. You must always be convinced God is with me. And that's why the children of Israel, they are so burdened down with all the cares of life. From the enemy's attack, to giants, to just about everything. To the snake uh, uh, biting them. But God was with them. They need to be reminded. So today, I want to encourage you. Jesus is with you. There is no such thing Jesus was not with you because you are a bad person. Because you, you went the wrong way. No, 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 no. This is from man's viewpoint, okay? We make ourselves judges. But in the word of God, when you give your life to the Lord, he's with you. Don't let someone say, Jesus forsake you. Jesus will never forsake you. You will forsake Jesus. <laughs> Not Jesus. Jesus will never forsake anyone. Okay? So we need to understand that. In Psalms 31, say, be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. So if, is there anyone here got hope in the Lord? Yes. Every one of us got hope in the Lord. And so be of good courage. God will strengthen your heart. Amen. Psalms 55 verse 22 say, Turn your burdens to the Lord. He will take care of you. So what's your burden today? Huh? Your unhappiness, turn it to the Lord. Your bad relationship, turn it to the Lord. Your failures in life, turn it to the Lord. Maybe your sickness, turn it to the Lord. We've got to learn like what the psalmist say. Turn your burdens. So what are burdens really? Think about it. We are burdened down the cumbersome of life. And today, a lot of people, it's not that they don't have money. It's not that they don't have food to eat. It's not that, you know, they are not healthy is that they have so much pressure. Okay? Not good pressure. It is bad pressure. It is when someone mock you. When someone like the devil laugh at you. That, my friend, is burden. Never allow, okay, to be burdened down by the cares of this life. In Psalms 50, verse 15 say, you must pray to the Lord when you are in trouble. Every one of us, we are not perfect. We get in trouble every now and then. And Psalms 50, verse 15 say, you go, cast your burden to the Lord. Pray, seek the Lord. Okay, he will deliver you. In fact, the Bible says God will honor you. Okay? Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Never worry about anything. Instead, in everything, let your petition be made known. I'm reading from the Amplified Version, okay? To God, through prayers and requests, with thanksgiving. You see, we got to learn to be thankful. Yeah. So when you're praying, you're thankful, God is going to fulfill your request. The Bible, Jesus say, can a father give the son when he asks for a fish, a snake? 
No, 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 no. When you ask God for a fish to eat, to, to, to meet your, your daily needs, your hunger, God will not give you a snake. That is not our God. God will give you gladly the fish. You need to remember that. Okay? God is your refuge and your strength. Psalms 46, verse 1 and 2. God is your refuge and your strength. A great help in times of distress. Has anyone here lately had some distressing moment? We all have. And the Bible says, God is your refuge. God is your strength. A great help. Not just a help, a great help. Because God is greater than your burdens. And when you give it to Jesus, it's become very light. Because Jesus, nothing is impossible to him. Nothing is impossible. Therefore, we will not be frightened when the earth roars, when the mountains shake, the Bible says, and the, when the sea foam. You remember the disciple? They have Jesus. So when the sea started to foam, they got worried. They say, oh, Lord, help us. We are perishing. They were in distress. So when you are in the distressed moment, remember, Jesus said, Lo, I am with you. And Jesus is greater than the roar of the ocean. Remember that. In Psalms 38, verse 4 and 6, For my iniquities have gone over my head, like waves of a flood. As a heavy burden, they weigh too much for me. My wounds are lonesome, are loathsome, and corrupt because of my foolishness. I am bent and bowed down greatly. I go about mourning all the day long. Here, the guilt overwhelms the psalmist. The Sami say, you know, all day long, I am burdened down with this guilt. All right? Now, we know the enemy will try to condemn you, will try to make you guilty. That's from the enemy. It's not from God. Okay? It is a burden too heavy to bear. The wounds is real and here the psalmist say, I'm bent over and wrecked with pain. All day long, I walk around filled with grief. You know, it is said that there are people that are overwhelmed with all this condemnation. But I want to tell you today, Romans, Apostle Paul say, there is now no condemnation if you are in Christ. No condemnation. So don't walk around be condemned. We need to go to the Lord and tell the Lord, God, I am in you. And your word say there is now no condemnation. So we need to realize, you know, sometimes people are so mean. All right? They try to throw the burdens of execution, the burden of you know, critical spirit and negativity upon you. Oh, that person cannot make it. See, he's, a, he's, he's a, not a strong Christian. He's, his faith is not there. When people started to throw burdens of accusation at you, don't even receive it. You need to learn to say, in the name of the Lord, I will not receive it. Because Jesus has set you free not to go around carrying other people's burden. Okay? And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, there had no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. 
Okay? So there are people get tempted. You and I get tempted. That's what the Bible say. Because you are a man. You are a woman. A woman and a man. So you'll be tempted. But God is faithful. I want to tell you today about our God. He is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above all that you are able, but with the temptation also make a way to escape that you might be able to bear it. You see, Jesus has set you free. He don't want you to be burdened down with temptation all the time. He will make a way for you to escape. So don't let everyone say, I'm always tempted of the Lord. No, 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 don't. Even the enemy will come and tempt you. Don't give in to the enemy because God is faithful. He will make a way of escape for you. And he has already made escape for many of us. And we need to be thankful because Jesus Christ loves you and died for you. And this is so important. We need to remember, you know, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, we know the Beatitudes in the Amplified Version in verse 31 say, so don't ever worry by saying, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? Because it is the unbelievers who are eager for all those things. But we are not unbelievers. We are the saints of the Most High God. Surely your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. And the Bible says, our concern is God's kingdom and his righteousness. We should not be troubled on every side and not be distressed by burdens of life. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus said, come to me. If you have the burdens of this life, the cares, it is not the will of God for you to carry. Jesus said, give it to me. I will take care of all your burdens. I will give you peace. I will give you joy. I will give you happiness. I will give you righteousness. I will give you no condemnation. You can sleep without worrying, without being condemned. This is what Jesus has come to give you and I. But then we got to ask ourselves, do I want to receive it or do I keep carrying the burdens of life? And it's not the will of God. Let me quote another quote. A pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expect it to change. The realist adjust the sail so that the boat keep going the direction of the goal. All right? Do not be the pessimist. Complain all the time about the wind, but don't do anything about it. Do not be the optimist that expect, oh, it will change. That's why Jesus rose up, rebuked the wind, and said, peace, be still. And this is where Jesus wants us to be the realist. We have to face it up. We don't run away. We don't do nothing. We are conquerors in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are a conqueror, my friend, you better start having faith in action. You better do some conquering. The promised land is there. You must go and fight the giant. You must go and break down the wall. Jesus is not going to do it for you. 
You got to go and do it. Faith without work is dead. It's alone. So you got to do something about it. The same thing, you know in your life, you are filled with all this fear, unhappiness, doubt, worries, pain. You got to say, Jesus, I want to throw it all to you because you are my burden carrier. I want to live a carefree life. I don't want to be under condemnation. You see, you got to have the choice. It's just when we come to repent, we got to say, God, I am repenting. You got to do something. You know, you cannot just, well, I hope it will go away. You know, you cannot do that. Romans chapter 8, the apostle Paul, he suffered a lot. Okay? So Paul is giving us good advice. In Romans chapter 8, and I will read to you in verse 18. <clears throat> And this is an amplified version. But what of that? For I consider that the sufferings of these present times, this present life, are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us, and in us, and for us, and confer on us. Apostle Paul say what? I consider that the sufferings, of this present time. You see, Paul went through a lot of suffering, but he never allowed the suffering in his life to become burden, discouragement. It did not deter him. Like the sheep, he just keep focus. He know his destiny. He know where he's heading. It did not stop him. He did not complain. He just give it to the Lord. And with that, the Lord many times make a way of escape for the Apostle Paul. And he always compare the glory that is about to be revealed. And that's why he's able to say, when it is revealed to us, it is in us. It is for us. It will be conferred on us. Very positive. Paul say, you're going to get it. It's going to be yours. It's going to be in you. And this is where we need to remember as Christians. Okay, it is going to be conferred to us. It is in us already. We are going through. There's a saying say, when the going is tough, the tough gets going. Smooth sea never make good sailors. Think about it. Smooth sea, uh, the sea is smooth, never make good sailors. It is the rough sea that makes good sailors. So you and I, Smooth life will not make good Christian. It is the trials, the persecution, the toughness of life will make good Christian. And so we learn Jesus most assuredly always said to us, cast me all your cares. Cast me all your burdens. Why are you so fretful? We must Give it to the Lord Jesus Christ. In closing, Isaiah chapter 10, in verse 27, and it shall be in that day that the burden shall depart from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. The yoke shall be destroyed because of fatness which prevent it from going around your neck. I like this. It says the yoke shall be destroyed because of fatness. <laughs> of course, now we don't want to be fat. La. It's not nice to be fat. But as Christians, we will be fat in the Lord. Yes, God wants to give you fatness. That means you are so full. You are so complete, perfected, that the yoke, no more. You are free already. You know? And so he say, in that day, the burden shall depart from your shoulders. And today is the day. You don't wait for heaven, my friend, because you are living today. 
And if you are living today, God wants you to be fat in Him. That the burden cannot touch you. And truly today, Jesus Christ has come to set you free. That this burden of life cannot even touch you. Because you refuse to carry it anymore. You are created in the image of God Almighty. And Jesus Christ has come, the second man from glory. Okay, the second Adam from glory has come to give you life and life more abundantly. In Jesus' name.